I know this video is coming out a little bit later than some of the other reviews and first impressions and other reaction videos. Alien Romulus came out this past Friday, and I was able to go and see it this weekend at the Alamo Draft House in St. Louis, Missouri. So I'm going to talk about some positives, a couple negatives, and just some general thoughts about this movie, and see if it lived up to the pre-rating I gave it in a previous video of an A. If you want to find out if it lived up to the hype, stay tuned to the end of the video. So, first and foremost, welcome back to the channel. If you've never been here before, my name is Matt. This is Secondhand Home Theater, where I talk about various home theater topics, but I do it through the lens of buying things secondhand. My home theater is basically all secondhand items. I buy very few items new, and that's what I do on this channel. Here today, this is something a little different. We're not actually talking about home theater equipment or anything like that. I'm actually talking about Alien Romulus, which came out on August 16th, which is this past Friday. And here in this video, I'm going to give you just some initial thoughts and impressions. I'm not going to go into any spoilers. I'm going to try and keep it spoiler free for those of you who haven't seen the movie yet. And I'm basically just going to do it as two sections. I'm going to give my positive kind of aspects, and then I'm going to talk about just some negative aspects and just kind of give an overall opinion. So we're going to start now with the positives. And... It's no surprise to anyone who's watched any of my content. I mean, I made an entire week detailing the Alien franchise leading up to Alien Romulus coming out this past Friday. I'm a huge fan of the series. And as such, I think my fandom and my nostalgic memories for this series will play a little bit of a factor in my ratings and my kind of positives and negatives towards this film. So I want to throw that out there first. But positives. The very first thing to mention. This movie looks really good. It has a lot of good uh, effects, practical effects. The creatures, the aliens, the xenomorphs, they look really good. And they did a lot of this stuff practically. They did mix in a little bit of CGI here and there on certain things. But overall, you know, the very first thing that stands out, and you can even see this in the trailers. You don't even have to watch the movie to see this. But it is just a beautifully shot film, in my opinion. There's a lot of really good effects. There's a lot of really good set pieces and scenery and background information. And like I said, the creature effects, the xenomorphs of all the various stages just look really good because they did a lot of practical effects. So the biggest positive right out the gate to me, the creature effects and everything, the visuals look really good on this movie. So I think in terms of like characters, one positive of this movie is really Rain and Andy, who are the main characters. And a case could be made that Andy, who's the android, really is the main character of this movie. I think you could make a case for that. But the other characters are okay. They're pretty much generic horror movie, slasher movie kind of characters. And they're kind of a means to an end. They're there to be killed off and to further the alien life cycle for the most part and kind of further the plot with their deaths. But really the main characters of Rain and Andy and specifically Andy, I think are really good characters. And they actually fit in fairly well with the lore of the alien universe and you can see them as being a believable set of characters that live in this world that the other films have created and like i said just a minute ago i think you could even make a case that andy who's the android really could be the main character because he goes through the biggest character arc throughout the entire movie he's the one who explains most of the exposition and he's the one who kind of has the entire movie framed around him. He's really the most important character for this movie and for the plot of the movie. So in some aspects, I think you could make a valid argument that Andy is the main character of this film. 
which is something different. The synthetics, the androids usually are side characters, but in this, he really is like a 1A, 1B with, with Rain. So definitely I think those characters stand out and they're pretty good in this film. So another positive going along with the creature design and the characters, I think there are some good action set pieces in this movie. And some of them harken back and kind of pay homage to previous films. But then there is one or two that are kind of unique to this movie and are a little bit different and something different that we've never seen in the franchise before. You know, I think they're done pretty well. And again, a lot of stuff was done practically. There is a mix of CGI in there. But I think overall, the action set pieces are pretty good, you know? So I, I think that's definitely a positive for this movie. Are they as good as like Aliens, which is probably the pinnacle of action in this franchise? No, it's not gonna like outdo that, but it definitely has some decent moments. And I think, you know, it is a pretty good addition to the series. Now also on the opposite side of the action or kind of to the side of the action, the actual horror elements and the suspense and kind of the tension. This movie has its moments where you see some good body horror. Obviously it's an alien movie that's gonna happen. You see some good tense moments. There's one scene in particular that I think is pretty good and pretty tense, although it kind of has a little bump at the very end. Overall, I think the tension and I think the just overall horror atmosphere, Fetty Alvarez does a pretty good job with that and I think it will satisfy most people who are horror fans, you know, even if they're not fans of the series, if they are just looking for, you know, a horror movie that's kind of like an alien version of sl a slasher movie or something. I think this one pays pretty good homage to that and really kind of fits in to that niche. Again, is it as scary or as tense or as suspenseful as, say, the original Alien? Again, no. It's kind of hard to beat something when you've known about it in pop culture for so long. But I think for what it is in the modern day, I think it's a fairly good effort and a fairly good addition in the actual like horror element of this movie. The story is decent. Uh, it's not anything extraordinary or groundbreaking or revolutionary in the series. You know, this movie takes place in a weird spot in the timeline. It happens between the original Alien and before Aliens, and it's almost directly in the middle. It's like 20 years after the original Alien and like 30 years, 35 years, whatever, before Aliens. So it's in this weird spot in the timeline, and it doesn't actually follow Ripley or any of the characters from the original series from the 80s and 90s. So you're in this weird spot. But given what it is, I think the story is okay. Again, it's somewhat generic. It's somewhat just kind of there, you know, to get characters from A to B to interact with the aliens. But I like the fact that in this movie, the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you really get to see a portion of the life on Jackson Star, on the planet at this mining colony. And you really get a sense for why these kids you know, teenagers, young adults, whatever, why they want to leave. And again, there is a little bit of some couple of hiccups that I might get to about the story uh, in the next section of the video. But I think overall, Fetty Alvarez did a pretty good job of creating the atmosphere and giving the audience at least a glimpse into why these characters want to do what they're going to do in this movie and why they eventually go up to the space station and get involved. Now, again, the story is just a means to an end. It's just how do we get this group of characters onto the ship that has aliens on it to start doing everything. Really, for what it is, it could be a lot worse. I mean, they really could have cheaped out if they really wanted to and really skipped over the entire story beat of them being on the planet. They very easily could have just started this movie with them on their little spaceship approaching the space station and just have, uh, you know, exposition of one of the characters talking about why they're there and completely skipping out on the whole part of seeing the actual Jackson Star colony. So I really do appreciate that they dedicated a small portion, you know, 10 minutes or whatever it is of the movie to actually let you see that. You can actually get a sense of what's going on there. So I do appreciate that. And I think that does fall into a positive for this film. And then on to one 
last positive before I get into a couple of my little, you know, hiccups that I think this movie had, is that the actual creature, like I said, the special effects, the practical effects are really good. And arguably this creature looks probably the best it's looked since the films of the 90s that had the practical effects of a man in a suit and just, you know, tactile creatures that you could see on the screen. But it also goes into kind of the extended life cycle of the aliens, which I think is a neat thing to actually see. We've never seen the entire set of stages from when an alien goes from an egg to a full-grown xenomorph. And in this movie, you actually get to see more of that. So I actually do think that is a positive for this film to actually see these other steps that we've never seen before. Overall, I think this movie is pretty good and has a fair amount of positives to it for what it is. But there are some hiccups, there are some negatives, uh, in my opinion, to this film, which I think is inevitable. I don't think you're gonna escape these sort of things just given the nature of what type of movie it is and the long lineage and pop culture influence these films have had. So while I appreciate them wanting to show the more expanded life cycle and the different stages that the xenomorphs go through. Because of the narrative story that's constructed here and the timeline that's constructed within the film, these stages happen very, very rapidly. So going from an egg with a face hugger all the way up to a full grown xenomorph happens in the span of like 10 to 15 minutes on the screen. And in other movies, it may have screen time of, oh, it only takes 10 or 15 minutes to go from an egg and a face hugger to a full grown xenomorph. But in the context of those films, those movies kind of allude to a passing of time. And so that screen time, you know, for us watching it may only be 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but in the narrative of the story, a number of hours or maybe even a day or so has passed. And that gives it enough time to like gestate and all these things to happen. But in this movie, we watch it in like 10 to 15 minutes of it going from point A to point B. But it also happens in like 10 to 15 minutes in the actual constructed time of the movie. So there's no passage of time. It really just happens extremely quickly, way more quickly than any other film in the series. Really, they could have adjusted the story slightly and allowed for more time and this wouldn't have been an issue. But I do think a lot of fans that I've read online will agree with me that the amount of time it takes to go from a face hugger laying the embryo to a full grown alien is way too short and compacted in this movie. It would have been nicer for them to retool the story slightly to allow a longer time period to make that more accurate to what we've seen in all the other films and media. So I think that is a slight hiccup and a slight kind of negative on this film. So kind of going along the lines of that, something that also kind of breaks continuity with other films. And this isn't so much a spoiler. I think, you know, we've kind of seen some of this in the trailers and it came up also in like Prometheus and Alien Covenant, is that even though this movie is set between the original Alien and Aliens, the technology that's used in this movie seems way more advanced than what you see in any of the other films. And even in Alien Resurrection, which is set in the timeline of the story, like 200 years after the events of the original three Alien movies, the technology in that movie isn't even as technologically advanced as what we see here. So it causes kind of some weird timeline inconsistencies of how does technology like this exist here, but then in the other movies it seemingly has vanished, or in the case of like some of the weapons in this movie. How do they have these weapons here with these capabilities, but the Colonial Marines, which are supposed to be one of the most elite like fighting forces in the universe in the next movie, in the timeline, doesn't have this level of technology? It seems kind of weird. Fetty Alvarez actually alluded to this fact in that, oh, he looks at it as, well, you know, even in our modern society today, you could go to a more like rural area or a more like rundown area and see older technology, like an older vehicle, for example. You know, like here where I live, if you went to some of the farmland, you know, that I, I live on and live by, you would see these old farm trucks that are 
20, 30, 40 years old, just some old like Ford or Chevy pickup truck that farmers are using. And if you were to just see that, you would maybe assume if you had no knowledge of the rest of the world, that is just the level of technology for a vehicle and not realize that if you went to a bigger city, you would see a Tesla or like more modern vehicles that are stylized differently and have more updated features and technology. And Fetty Alvarez kind of alluded to that, that the universe we see has always been kind of framed around like the space truckers and these prison planets and these kind of low budget colonies and stuff that don't have a lot of technology. And again, I guess you could kind of stick to that as an explanation. But again, same as the alien life cycle. I think that's kind of like a, a cop out, kind of like a coping thing to try and make sense of it. And again, I get it. It's like, well, you have these cool ideas for scenes in your head and you just want to put them in the movie and then you'll find a way to explain it later. But it does kind of break the narrative timeline of technology within this universe considering where this movie is set in the actual aliens timeline so because of that i do think that's a bit of a hiccup and a bit of a, a negative to this film one other thing that i think could ride the fence a little bit because i understand why these things have been put in the movie but then i also kind of understand why people get upset about it even for me there's a lot of callbacks to the previous films in this movie it's kind of hard not to pay homage and make callbacks to the original films that created those tropes or those kind of like iconic scenes and iconic lines that everyone knows. And so inevitably you're going to get yourself mixed up in that. It's inevitable. Even if you really try to avoid it, it has such a wide influence that you're going to inevitably get caught up in replicating something that maybe you weren't even setting out to do, but you do anyways because of the long-standing cultural impact of the original movies. In this film, they also have some blatant homages and lines that are ripped just fully from the original movies. I understand they put them in there just to get fans of the series to kind of like, okay, all right, we get it. We know why you put that in there. One line in particular <laughs> that uh, Andy the robot says doesn't really make sense for the character, but when he says the line, when I was at the theater this past weekend, everyone in the theater cheered. So I get why it's in there, but it also doesn't make sense. And so I think kind of shoehorning those in while the intentions may have been genuine and good, I do think it detracts a little bit from the film because it seems kind of out of place in certain instances for these characters. So while I praised all the practical effects, and, you know, miniatures that they used and the creature effects that were practical, you know, and the face huggers and a lot of the creatures and all that stuff were practical. And I really do praise that because it looks really good. There are a few spots in this movie where they use CGI and the CGI doesn't look that great. I mean, it, it's good for what it is, but it's always that thing of the, our brains can pick up when something is fake like that. And that's why practical effects leave so much more of an imprint with us because our brain can recognize that even though that creature is fictional, seemingly, I mean, hopefully the xenomorphs don't exist out in the universe somewhere, but, but you know, we can understand the creature is fictional, but because you're using practical effects, we can recognize it as being more real because we know it's tactile and it's there interacting with the other actors and characters on the screen. Where CGI effects will sometimes just, it's blatantly obvious, even if the effects are done pretty well, it's blatantly obvious we know that it's fake. For those of you who've seen the movie, again, I'm not gonna spoil it, one character uses a lot of CGI, and I feel like that CGI could have been done better, or they could have retooled the story to where they wouldn't have had to use the CGI. Again, if you've seen it, you kinda know what I'm talking about. They could have restructured the story that that character could have been, you know, in a situation where you didn't need to do what they did. Again, I understand why they did it, and I understand the reaction they wanted the audience to give. Again, my showing that I went to, the audience all, you know, kind of like, oh yeah, you know, you could audibly hear the audience react when you see this character. They didn't really have to do that. They could have done something a little bit different in the story, still had the same effect of, letting you know who the character is 
without using that CGI. They could have done something practically or just, you know, changed it up a little bit that you didn't have to do what they did. But again, that CGI and a few of the other little CGI moments throughout the film, I think could have been done a little bit better. They didn't really need to do what they did, but they did it anyways. And, and so for that, I think that is a slight negative on this film as well. So to wrap up, my little negative, you know, hiccup section here. The actual characters. While I said Rain and Andy are pretty well written and are pretty good characters for what they are within the context of the story. Like I said, especially Andy. Like I said, you could make a case he's the main character. But the other characters that are here are basically fodder for a typical, like, horror slasher movie. Just by nature of the way this type of movie is constructed and because they were kind of harkening back to the haunted house in space kind of thing that the original Alien movie did. The other characters that die in the film are mainly there just for that. Like, that's ultimately what they're there for. Yes, they have a little bit of character development and they do have a little bit of, like, you know, screen time to, like, develop the characters. But ultimately, outside of the main characters of the movie, they're just there to get killed by the aliens, be face tugged by the aliens, you know, to allow the birth of chest bursters and all this stuff. They're all just there to further the alien infestation, you know, within the movie. So they make some dumb choices, you know, uh, they make, you know, do just things that seem kind of stupid at times, but not all of it. You know, some of it does make sense when you look at it within the context of the story that these are, young adults, you know, teenagers, and they've never experienced these xenomorphs, and so they don't know what to do, so they decide to just do whatever is closest here by hand or whatever. And some of that is kind of stupid with a couple scenes, you know, uh, but ultimately they're there just as fodder. They're there just to be killed off in different ways, you know, and just have things happen so that the plot of the story can move forward. And ultimately, that's kind of just a construct of this type of movie and what they're going for. That is kind of a negative. They could have actually spent a little more time or maybe, again, retooled things slightly to make things a little less stupid at times. That's just the nature of this type of movie and what they were going for. But ultimately, I still think that is a bit of a hiccup and a bit of a negative. Okay, so now that I've talked about, you know, some positives, some negatives, you know, hiccups that I felt were in this story and in this movie, ultimately, what do I think this movie rates out at? You know, what, what kind of rating would I give this? And I know my love and nostalgia for this franchise will play into my opinion of this movie. I rated this beforehand is an A. That was my pre-rating. That I thought from the trailer footage this was going to be an A. It was going to be right up there with the original two Alien movies. After seeing it, do I think it's an A? Unfortunately not. It's not an A. But I do think this is a solid B on my rating scale. I think this is up in the upper third of the movies when you, you know, kind of factor in the entire franchise. It has its good moments. It also has some hiccups in the story. But ultimately for me, and this may also be influenced by not only my nostalgia, you know, and memories of this franchise, but also from the marketing, because they marketed this movie pretty directly. They knew what they were wanting to do with the marketing on like lovers of the franchise and stuff like they really honed in and knew how to directly market this to its audience so that may play a factor in this too but ultimately for me the reason i rate this a b on my scale is this is the first movie i've watched probably in like five or six years which would have been infinity war and endgame for the avenger movies where i was just excited to go and see it at the movie theater and I was just sitting there with a smile on my face the entire time and I was really that 10 year old kid again that this just filled me with that same nostalgia that same warm you know feeling of I'm 10 years old watching the original alien movies on my old tv at the old house in the living room and just big old smile on my face as I watch everything happen. I'm that 10 year old kid. And this is the first movie in a long time 
that made me feel like that while I was at the movie theater. And that holds a lot of weight to me and really influences my rating on this movie. It's definitely not terrible. I mean, I can understand why people would rip this movie. And I've seen, actually, surprisingly, a lot of people since this movie released come out and just rip it to shreds and say it's absolutely terrible and that it's a blatant ripoff and that it has no positive qualities and it's horrible and, like, no one should watch it. And I really find that odd that so many people would be like that vehemently against this movie. Does it have its like moments that can be criticized? Yeah, sure, it does. But ultimately I think this is a way better effort than a lot of the movies that have come out in this series since like the 90s. I mean, it's been like 30 years since we've had a movie in this series that actually gets taken seriously. And you can tell that the production of the movie with Fetty Alvarez and the actual production crew and everything actually tried their best. That they weren't just like ramshackle throwing something together just as a money grab. Like they really care about the franchise and they really tried to do something unique and different and put their own stamp on it. You know, so I can understand if you don't like the movie or I can understand if you have your criticisms. I mean, I have my few little points here in this video that I thought could have been better. But I really am surprised that so many people are actually just like ripping this movie apart. And I think part of that, too, also goes into the greater <laughs> grand scheme of this. This franchise has been around for so long and it's so ingrained in pop culture and has so many iconic characters, iconic moments, iconic creatures, iconic lines, that even if you try to avoid being derivative of that, it's gonna reference back to the original movies. You're never gonna avoid it. Plus, I also think the fan base wants to see a certain level of homage to the original films. But you can't do too much, because if you do too much, then they're gonna criticize you for being a blatant ripoff. But if you don't homage the original movies, you get criticized for not, you know, following its roots and not paying respect to what got you there. So you have to find this very delicate balance in between where you have just enough nostalgia and just enough new ideas kind of in here to mesh together so that people don't, you know, just criticize you one way or the other. And I think when you wrap all that together, I think Fetty Alvarez and his production really did about as good of an effort as you can get to blend the two things together, to give you nostalgia and pay homage to the original movies while also trying some new stuff and trying to like show you new parts of this world and give you new action scenes and new, you know, just set pieces that we haven't seen before. So yeah, I think things could have been changed and things could have been done better. It's not perfect by any stretch, but I don't think it's worth saying it's so terrible because I don't think it's that. I think it definitely has its merits. It definitely does the best it can to blend everything together. And because of that, I think it's a B, like I said earlier. It didn't quite hit to that A rating, you know, that I thought I was going to give it. But it's a solid B, maybe B plus, you know. It's right there. If they could have changed a few things, I think it would have been an A. But definitely one of the best Alien movies that's come out since the 90s, easily, and definitely slots right in there with the quality of the original movies. You know, maybe not as good, but I think it's up there. So with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I tried to cut this down as much as I could, but I'm sure I rambled longer than I expected. Like I always say, thank you to everyone out there who's liked and subscribed to my channel. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below on whether or not you like this movie, whether or not you think it's, you know, a worthwhile entry. You know, I'm curious to hear everyone's opinions. I don't begrudge anybody for not liking this, you know, and I don't begrudge anyone who would say this is like their favorite movie of the franchise. Everyone has their own opinion, and who am I to judge and say you're right or wrong, you know? But I am curious to hear what you have to say, so definitely comment down below. We are finally pushing through and finishing up with my Alien content. I am going to have a video coming out soon about my experience at the Alamo Draft House, which uh, was honestly, as a spoiler, extremely cool <laughs> going there. I really enjoyed it. And that's going to be coming out soon on the timeline, and then I'm going back to some normal content like I do on my channel. Uh, I'm gonna do some projector stuff. I'm gonna get back into the calibration videos and just talk about other equipment and stuff here in my home theater. 
So with that, thank you again to everyone, and I'll see you in the next video on Secondhand Home Theater.